I have been sick over the past week. Uh, I got very, very sick and I'm finally back on my feet getting work done and back to YouTube. But oh my gosh, that sucked. Hello everyone, my name is Steven. I am a second year dental student and this is actually a part two video to a video I made months ago. This is going to be dental student reacts slash responds to dental school Reddit. In this video, I will be going through the dental school Reddit and just checking out some of the posts and giving my genuine honest reactions and thoughts to some of the questions that are being asked here or some of the thoughts that people have. So. Hopefully you are one of these Reddit posters and this is going to be an answer for you in a long form from a real dental student. I am not an expert, I'm not a dentist, I don't know everything about dental school, dental school admissions and dentistry, but I do have a bit of experience, especially now in my second year of dental school, and I hope to impart some knowledge in this video on you. And before I get into it, shout out to thelooped.com for this incredible shirt. Um, got the wonderful colors here, got the loops. It's super dentistry, it's super awesome. Check it out on thelooped.com. So let's get into it, man. Let's go ahead and start looking at some of these posts. I'm just gonna go through and pick things that I think I can respond to. And I'm gonna start right here with the title, low GPA above average DAT, because this is something that I get all the time over on my Instagram. I get questions all the time from young students. Uh, they send me their numbers and they ask essentially, what are my chances of getting in? And before I kind of read this and respond, I want to tell you all, if you're in this situation and you're looking to go to an outside source to ask somebody, uh, you know, what do, what do you think are my chances of getting into dental school? Just make sure that you take every response with a grain of salt. The people that are answering that question aren't actually on dental school admissions committees. And though they may have gone through the process themselves, they're not experts. And so they're not gonna know for a fact whether or not you're gonna get in and what your chances actually are. So just make sure that you don't put too much weight on people's answers to these types of questions. And that includes people like me. So with that being said, let's get into this. Okay, so my thoughts are honestly, uh, your GPA isn't too bad. A 3.6 overall is a really solid GPA and a 3.2 in, in science is also pretty solid. Uh, could be a little bit higher, but it's it's honestly okay in my opinion. And a 21 academic average on the DAT is is also really solid. I think it, it's going to depend here. I don't think this person mentioned what their current uh, science score on the DAT was, but oftentimes what we see is we see people trying to balance between GPA and DAT scores. So the GPA can be a little bit lower if the DAT makes up for it and is uh, substantially higher. So if you were able to perform quite well on the DAT, especially in the science section, I think this would help you greatly uh, when it comes to making up for maybe a slightly below average uh, science GPA in college. The other thing that I, that I saw that I noticed here is it looks like you have 22 volunteering experiences. I'm not sure how many hours that translates into. It's probably a lot. 22 is, is a good bit, but of course it just depends on what those things are. Um, and a thousand shadowing hours is, is plenty, is plenty substantial enough. So in my opinion, uh, my, my limited opinion, I think that this person has a good chance of getting into dental school with these numbers. Um, I think you need to make up for maybe some of the, the areas like your GPA that aren't as strong with a really solid interview. Uh, make sure that you present yourself quite well and you're able to explain your college experiences and what led you to the position that you're currently in. As far as the master's is concerned, I know people who did a master's and uh, who, who went that route for a year essentially. And I, I think it's a solid option if you're unable to be accepted to the dental school that you want to be accepted to. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it's a requirement by any means. Ultimately, if you're worried about the loan, um, getting into it as soon as possible is technically your best option because you'll have the most time to pay it back and the most opportunity for your money in the future to be working for you towards those loans. So the earlier, the better when it comes to the loan for dental school. But I also always tell people, do not rush into dentistry, do not rush into dental school. Uh, there will be plenty of time for you to be a dental student and then for you to subsequently be a dentist in your career. So try not to just come screaming into the profession and get there way too early because you will experience burnout. And especially in dental school, that's, that's a tough thing to deal with. So just keep that in mind. But best of luck, you have a wonderful shot here and I wouldn't be too worried uh, if I were you. This question right here is about 3D printing within dentistry uh, in dental schools. And I think that 
when it comes to the discussion of technology and dentistry, it's it's almost like an endless discussion because uh, we are young people. We grew up in the technological revolution of the late 90s and early 2000s. And so as we enter this dentistry profession, it's it's very common for all of us to think about technology. What are the newer technologies that are being used now? And what are the things that are gonna be used in the future? I personally have zero experience with 3D printing in the dentistry field. Um, I have a little bit more experience when it comes to milling. So kind of the opposite process, uh, milling down crowns from blocks of zirconia, for example. And this is really common and in fact, becoming more and more commonplace uh, the further into the future we get. But 3D printing is also on the horizon. If you're interested in a podcast that talks about a lot of the technology and dentistry and where we're headed, check out the Millennial Dentist Podcast, Dr. Sully Sullivan. He's actually a graduate of my dental school where I'm currently at. And on there, they talk about technology of, and dentistry now and where it's headed. In one of the recent episodes they released, they actually talked about 3D printing and how they're getting there when it comes to 3D printing crowns. Uh, the big question is not necessarily the printer itself, but more so the restorative material uh, that they are able to print with. So it's an interesting question. Um, at my dental school here at, at Tennessee, we haven't really gotten super into 3D printing, but we are into the CAD CAM technology quite a bit, which has been awesome. And it's something to look into if you are a young student who's interested. So this question is asking about free DAT resources. And the student here is saying that they actually already went ahead and purchased DAT bootcamp, but they feel like they need to get some other sort of study method or, or resource because bootcamp is a lot and they don't really feel great about where they're at with their studying. Here is some advice for you. First off, DAT bootcamp, in my opinion, and now it is a biased opinion because I actually work for bootcamp. Uh, but before I even worked for bootcamp, I had the same opinion that I do now. DAT bootcamp is, is really all you're ever gonna need when it comes to studying for the DAT. It is a full program that's gonna cover every aspect of the test in great detail, and it's continuing to get better and better every year as they add new content and new teachers to drive home this content to you in whatever way works for you. So in my opinion, you don't really need anything else other than DAT bootcamp, and I certainly wouldn't go out and spend extra money because after you take the DAT and you start to apply for schools, you're gonna have to spend more money on just applying. But if you're a roughly a month out and you don't feel good about where you're at with your DAT studying, my honest opinion on this is to try to see if you can reschedule your exam. It sounds kind of crazy. It sounds really, really stressful and anxiety ridden, but I actually did this when I was studying for my DAT. I think I was about a month and a half to two months out and I realized I was not in the position where I needed to be. I was behind in my study schedule and I got really nervous. So I went ahead and pushed back my DAT a few weeks and that was a great decision. It gave me extra time. It took some of the pressure off of me and allowed me to focus back in and I ended up doing quite well on my DAT, which of course helped me get into dental school. So if you don't feel like you are where you need to be, don't force the exam. Never take the DAT unless you truly feel ready for it. Because despite the score that you think you wanna go in there with, uh, dental schools are gonna be able to see every score that you have. And I know that this is stressful to hear about, uh, but just try to give it your best shot every time you take the DAT. And don't ever go in there and take it just because you're scheduled for it. If you have to push it back a little bit, I promise you it's worth it in the long run to make sure that you get the best score possible. So in this question here, the person is asking about specializing and going to a school that has a pass fail grading system. I have been vocal about this on my channel. I think I talked about it maybe in a podcast. I don't plan to specialize. That's not where I see my career headed. Um, and it's not necessarily for me, but I do have a lot of thoughts and opinions on the matter. I also have a lot of friends who are, are thinking about going down that path. So it's something I think I'm relatively qualified to talk about. And the question here, the person is asking if they want to specialize, should they go to a school that isn't pass fail? because how else are the residency programs going to be able to evaluate this student? The answer is you can go to a pass fail school or a traditional grading system school and get into any residency alike. It doesn't matter, they're going to have ways to evaluate you. In fact, if you do go to a pass fail school, I believe there is some sort of system for keeping uh, number grades and those are used actually specifically to evaluate students who are trying to get into residency programs. I do not go to a pass fail school. I go to a school where we have a traditional grading system and I can say that for somebody who maybe isn't wanting to specialize, it can be a bit more stressful to actually have letter grades again, just like you did in undergrad. And I have heard a lot of good things from students who are in pass fail systems. So from a school perspective and a personal experience perspective, 
perhaps it's better for you to go to a pass fail school. And this is just going to come to you by talking to students at different dental schools. What do they like? What do they prefer? But when it comes to getting a residency, you will be able to get into any residency despite pass fail or traditional grading. I promise they have systems that allow students from all different schools to get into their programs. And it's really about your own personal merits and your work in dental school that's going to allow you to be accepted to those next level programs. Just a little break in the action here to show you something that someone posted. Uh, this is a video of a posterior composite restoration uh, that's being performed on what looks to me like a typodont, but it could be, uh, it could be a real mouth here. This is once again, a composite resin restoration. It's a class one restoration, one single surface uh, that's being done on what looks to me like an upper tooth. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Composite resin is uh, I think pretty fun to work with. And as you'll find out, it is uh, quite aesthetically pleasing, especially when you do a good job like this person is doing, uh, creating all of the triangular ridges and the anatomy of the tooth. But that being said, uh, composite restorations, especially posterior composite restorations, can be uh, difficult and can have a high rate of failure. So definitely be careful. You will learn about all of this when you go into school and you start uh, considering the different considerations for restorative materials when we're working, especially in the posterior. So make sure you use a good rubber dam like this person did and you can do good posterior composites. This post has a solid and well-deserved 87 upvotes and I get it. I, I completely understand how this feels especially today actually being a test day for me. I feel like uh, the suction here on this one. <laughs> so this is a really long post where the person uh, kind of told their DAT story and gave their results. And I have a few thoughts about this. First off, congratulations to this person. A 27 academic average is good enough to get you into essentially any dental school you want to. Of course, there are other considerations, but that's a wonderful DAT score. But if you're a person uh, who, like me, uh, didn't get a 27, didn't get that high of a DAT score, some seeing posts like this can be kind of disheartening at times uh, when you're in that pre-dental period and you, you feel like you're inadequate. It's very easy to start to feel like everybody around you is getting scores like this and you're not going to be good enough to get into school. And that's a really slippery slope. It's not something that I recommend uh, you allowing yourself to fall into. When you're a pre-dental student and you're going through this process, make sure you're focusing on you. Do not focus on other people. It's a very quick and easy way to get very depressed if you start focusing on the merits and, and the, the achievements of other students like you. Just focus on what you can control. Focus on what's in front of you. And of course, if you're studying for your DAT, that should mean you studying for your day DAT and not worrying about the scores that other people are receiving. When you go onto these websites, at times it feels like everybody's getting uh, 27s, 26s, 28s, but I promise you, when you get to dental school and if you ever ask around with your classmates, a lot of them uh, received 19s, 20s, 21s in that area, and that is typically where we fall. So please do not see posts like this and get super worried and upset. Uh, just control what you can control. Interview tips. Um, this person is asking to be the, for the tips to be tailored to Florida, LECOM, and Midwestern Arizona. I do not go to any of those schools, nor did I interview with them. So maybe this isn't the answer that this person's looking for. But my general interview tips, uh, be honest, be open, be yourself, be excited. Um, and be professional. I think those are kind of the best the best ways to do it. Try to relieve stress and anxiety before you go into your interview so that when you get there, you're loose, you're open, you're ready to discuss um, basically anything, any aspect of your pre-dental experience. And that's gonna be the best way for you to ensure that you leave a good impression on the uh, interviewers that you're discussing things with. Also on a side note, when it comes to the interview process and experience, um, one of the teachers that, one of the four teachers that I interviewed with at my current dental school actually passed away a few weeks ago from cancer. And uh, it just sort of put it into perspective how far I've come in my career and, and some of the people who have already influenced me greatly. So make sure that you try to establish relationships with the people that you meet in your, in your interview both uh, the students around you and also the professors because you kind of never know what kind of impact they can have on you. He was somebody who actually ended up teaching me as a D1 last year in operative dentistry and I am going to miss him. So definitely take good care of the relationships that you're trying to build there in those interview experiences. Be honest, be open, and be ready to talk about your life. 
It's pretty easy. It's pretty fun. Don't let anybody worry you too much or get you off track. I got a C minus in Orgo too. Should I retake the class? I have heard a lot of conflicting opinions. Also, my GPA is pretty solid. I'm actually of the belief that if you get a C minus in a class, your chances of getting into dental school aren't ruined at by any means. And I think there's like any question, there's a lot that plays into this. There's a lot more factors than just that one class. If you have a really solid GPA, and then you go in and you take your DAT and you do quite well in the organic section. Let's say you get a 22, 23, 24, somewhere in there, maybe maybe even higher, whatever it is. You'll be able to go in to your interview and sit down with the professors who you're discussing things with and tell them that, uh, essentially explain why you got a poor grade in this one class and then show them your improvement. See, this is how I improved when I went in and took the DAT. I was able to just greatly improve upon uh, my abilities in organic specifically and that's what led me to this score. And then you can explain why uh, you specifically didn't perform well in Organic 2. I don't necessarily think you need to go back and take that class again, but if you go ahead and you apply to dental school and you're not accepted, you're able to talk to some of the admissions people, um, perhaps the, the head of admissions, whoever you're discussing things with, ask them what it was about your application that they didn't like and that prevented them from accepting you. And typically they will tell you, they'll be honest with you. And if, of course, if the answer is that organic two grade, definitely that would be something that you'd wanna do. You'd wanna go in and retake it. But like I said, if you have everything else in control, you have everything else really solid, your application looks great other than that, really all that is is a good talking point for you in your interview to discuss how you made it through hardship, how you got over a difficult class and how you succeeded in the long run. So. Do not despair if you get a C minus. This is a really common question that I see all the time from young students who are specifically like high school age. I'll go ahead and read it. Hey there, I'm currently 15 and I work in the dentistry field. Hey there, I'm currently 15 and I want to work in the dentistry field when I grow up. Which sub subjects would you recommend taking in high school to be a future dentist? Also, what type of mathematics is involved in dentistry? I'm gonna get this question out of the way immediately, the mathematics question. I actually get this one all the time. Uh, personally, math is just not in dentistry. Even though there's a math section on the DAT and you of course have to take it as prereqs in college to get in, there is zero math in dental school. I think we may have had a course that discussed statistics and, but other than that, there is just no math. If you can do basic math, like, that anybody in society would need to be able to do, you can be a dentist. Uh, dentistry is a lot more focused on core science and the human body than it is on math. And so don't worry if you're a person who doesn't love math because I'm a person who absolutely despises math. I really am not good at it. And basically throughout my entire childhood and college, I had to force it to try to get through math classes. Uh, so now I'm in a career where math is not a big deal. But if you're 15 and you're in high school and you're looking to try to take courses that are gonna help you with dentistry in the future, there's not a whole lot you can really do until college. Um, if you want, you can take science courses in high school that maybe will push you to start to learn these topics now because there are topics in high school that you will literally see again in in dental school especially some of the basic sciences um, and some of like the biology topics and chemistry topics you're going to see those again in dental school at one point or another so really the the advice is just that uh, the more you can learn early on i guess technically the the better that will set you up for your future as a dental student but ultimately we're all going to have to learn these concepts many times and it doesn't give us too much of an advantage to see them at a young age enjoy high school enjoy college uh, do your best work hard but have fun and uh, we'll see you in the dentistry profession in a few years all right my friends that is it for this video that is it for reddit responses part two if you want to see a part three of this video series uh, let me know in the comments and maybe in a few months i'll make another one and talk about more of these questions uh, they're easy they're built in there's just all sorts of questions on this reddit uh, site and on the reddit dental school page so it's easy pickings for somebody like me and if you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments and make sure you like the video of course too that helps me out helps me with the algorithm and all that uh, wonderful jazz so yeah i appreciate all of you and i will see you again soon for more dentistry content more dental student dental school content and it'll be a good time check out the looped.com for these awesome shirts and that's it friends back to the studying